get going here. Where are my doors? Right there. Back up just a little bit here, y'all. See if I can't get a little bit better shot of what's going on here. Uh, that's probably about as good as it's going to get right there. Yep. I think. About right there? What do y'all think? I don't normally do this. Ooh, I don't want to miss anything. There's a lot going on there. And I'm going to struggle to put everything on video and be able to edit it all out and upload it. So, just go live and show some of this meatloaf making I do in between videos. So anyway, I got my right front here. I got my spindle off. I got a tower sitting here. I got a control arm over here somewhere. Lots and lots and lots and lots of stuff. Who we got? Yeah, hey. Yeah, we got some people. I know, I didn't advertise it. I didn't put it on Facebook or nothing. But we're working every night in the shop. And I've got to do prep work. Um, because, like, there's some things i got to figure out. And I can't just video everything while I'm figuring it all out. Um, because it ends up being so much footage that then I'm days and days and days of, like, trying to edit through the footage to make a video up and then that's holding up us getting the car because we gotta be on the track i'm i'm gonna try to make the golden egg with this in mississippi and that's like the first week of april and i'll tell you i know it's like the last week of january right now there's a lot to get done on this car i have got to stay after it so i'm live tonight and i'm just going to show some of the making of the meatloaf that's what i call it that's that southern term i use so anyway, so I'm going to do a little bit of making of the meatloaf and show y'all some of this prep work I'm doing. Because basically what I'm doing is, is I'm, I'm working through this right front on getting ready to shoot the video for mounting the upper. Because some of this stuff is so complicated, I can't just shoot it cold. You know, I, I'm not that good, y'all. I mean, I'm not terrible, but I'm not that good. So anyway, so like the first thing I ran into right off the bat... All right, so I got these lower ball joints. I'll show you. All right, so I got these QA1 lower ball joints that are the GM stud, and they are a 10 degree stud, yeah, but they're the 6141 stud, which is like the big Impala stud. And my Camaro spindles, that don't work. So, right off the bat, I need to cut my spindle, so I got it here. And I got that stud in there. And y'all check this out. I had to back my camera quite a bit of ways. I apologize for that. But like we're in that cell phone mode. And so it's narrow. So I got to back way up. Otherwise, I have to be seeing it. Yeah. Like, you can see, stud don't even come through the top of it. And that's something that you can, you got to be careful of because, I mean, that's 10 degree, that's 10 degree, that's 10 degree, but the diameter is drastically different. So, of course, I've got my tapers here. These things are not cheap either. But I got my tapers here, so you can see that's a reamer. So that's a tapered reamer. That's what that looks like. So we've got to ream it. Be real careful with a reamer. You can only go one way. You only cut, never back up with a reamer. Hang on one second, y'all. Uh, see. Oh. Jamie Lewis is sending me stuff. Jamie's been really helping me, y'all, on this on this build. And he, he built some great cars, but he's been helping me. Kind of, like, just sitting here talking back and forth through, like, kind of how things work and trying to, like, really get this metric car right. I just, I know y'all are tired. Tired of hearing his name, right? Well, he's just really been helping me a lot, so. Way it works. Okay. Cutting fluid. Go. Right here. Cutting fluid. Low speed. All right. Sure. Yep, that's right. So, let me put a little cutting fluid on here. Right there, like that. Do not want to go 
too far. I've got the other one here so I can check. Because all I'm going to do is go until these threads clear, and that's it. And it won't take, it won't take a lot. It will not take a lot to do that. Why I don't video all this and put it on there? Just be like, man, y'all move on. Go to the next thing. Tired of seeing him cut on that. But anyway, I'm just glad to be off that back. I'm not going to be able to look at the comments over there right now. But, uh, and I apologize for that. Yeah, that works. Yeah, I think that's good. Maybe just a hair more. I'm trying to creep up on it. There's a washer that goes in here. And so I'm just trying to just. Creep right up to it, right on past it. Yeah, I'm gonna quit right there. Okay, so we got that. Just up right quick before I forget. There we go. That reamer is the one from Speedway. It's fine. I use it very rarely, but when you need it, you need it. to get this mounted up and I'm, I gotta mock, start mocking up and see where this needs to be. I need to look at my caster and my camber and I don't want to go into the I don't want to go into the full spiel tonight on the roll centers and stuff. I'm not going to say I ain't going to talk about it but but I want to go into the full spiel on it and everything because i got to really make sure I Say all that in the right way and don't cause World War III. I, yeah, I could cause World War III. But, uh, but I've come to the conclusion that roll centers are not near as critical as we think they are. They, um, it's like instead of talking about eating a sandwich, we just go straight and just 
eat the sandwich. Uh, well, that's not a good analogy. But anyway, on the roll centers, we're trying to get at something when we're sitting there trying to figure out where the roll center is. And what I realized is, is I don't actually care where the roll center is. I care what these camber curves do. And it's like we're trying to move the roll center around to get a camber curve. Why don't we just set the camera curve and quit worrying about the roll center? Because that's what we're trying to do with it. So I got to figure out between now and when we, you know, when I film all that, maybe tomorrow and the next night, exactly how I'm going to say all that in a way that makes sense. So I'm still working on it. You can see I'm kind of working through it right now. Anyway, okay, back to this. So I got this here. That's good. Um, I need to get this. Level again. I put the board, you see, I put the board in here just to make everything easier to work with because I didn't want like jumping off of the tube or something. So, where is it on the board? It is sitting off that board at six and a half inches, which would be seven and a quarter because that board is three quarters of an inch thick. So, six and a half is exactly what it should be. Get you down. You get six and a half right there. I'm gonna set it low. I expect to run it just a little bit low. I wonder, should I run it a little bit low? No, I'm gonna set it level. I'm gonna just set it level. That's my baseline setup. I know I'm gonna run it a little low, but I'm gonna set my baseline setup. Take that shaft out and get it out of the way. All right. Okay, so there's that. Set the level, good to go. I need that short control arm right there. Missing a lot of parts. <laughs> Missing a lot of parts on that right now. Anyway, how are we doing? All right. Oh, uh, let me get a quick Dirt Fever TV car is looking good, man. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate that. Sonny Why, hey, been watching you for a, a few months. Without cutting into your time, where would you go for info building a four-link modify? I'm looking to build a one-tenth scale version. Thanks. Um, well, first thing you need is you need you need blueprints is what you need. You're doing one-tenth scale. Where do you get blueprints for a four-link modify? Hmm. Hmm. GRT got, I know they've got like drawings, but not the complete car. It's like, Chad Weir's. He's got like drawings of the rear side of a car, but not the whole car. Where do you go to get the whole car? I don't know. Anybody, can, is any of y'all, can y'all post on that? Where could you go get the whole blueprints for a modified, like a four-link modified? Does it have to be four-link? Get the drawings for, for a modified and then turn around. Like you could go to somewhere like Weir's Machine or something. And he's got like drawings of a complete four-link suspension. And I think Dave Hammonds may have some drawings on his Facebook or website of like his four link plates and stuff. So then you can turn around and you can take a generic modified, even if it's a three link or whatever, or sportsman, and then you can turn around and take the drawings for a four link setup just of those plates and stuff and like scab that together and engineer it out. Do it like that. Back what we were doing. Oh, let's see, what do we need? We need, oh, we need an upper ball joints. Got one right here. There's an upper. There. That is definitely not right. Next tapered. Ugh, more tools. So, uh, so I'm running the Chrysler screwing ball joints top and bottom. I'm trying to really get this one right. I mean, cut no corners, nothing. Let's get the best seat. Rebuildable, I can set the friction load on them, the whole nine yards, but that Chrysler upper right there, I think the upper, is it a 727? One of them's a 777, one's a 727. I don't know which is which, but anyway, it's seven degree on the top, 10 degree on the bottom. They're not all 10 degree on the bottom. This is like a QA1 bottom that's for a GM that's 10 degree. Um, I think I think a stock Chrysler is seven degree on the bottom as well. But anyway, seven degree on top, so I gotta set that. So, let's see, that taper is very different. Look how long the taper is right there on that one. That's the seven degree one. So, you can tell the difference between the seven and the ten. So, if you ever run across these, and listen, if you're in a squat link or something, and you see these jokers, you buy them because they're about a hundred or more a piece. Ten degree. See how it's short? See how it's fatter? 
seven degree. Longer, narrower taper out. Okay? See my swap mate where you can pick one of these up for 20, 25 bucks? Get all over that joker. So. Food for thought there. Alright. Make sure I put the right one in the right box. Get this sucker in here. Oh. Martin Rayson says, I can't wait until you get the car done and kick some butt. What colors are we going with on the car and body? We are going orange, okay? And I'm going to tell you something. I live in Tennessee. I ain't going to lie. I'm not a Vols guy. I ain't been a Vols guy since we won the Tostitos Bowl in 1998. But, you know, I mean, my coach is long since retired and gone. But anyway, I mean, I, I watch the Vols, but, you know, I'm a little bit more of an Alabama guy. I got a grandson that's diehard Alabama, so, you know, you got to kind of – you can't go against the grandson. You know how that is. But I'm orange. You know why I'm orange? Because, buddy, you can't say you didn't see me in the shadow of the track or whatever. If you run over me, you run over me because you could see me. You can't say you didn't score me because you couldn't see my car. If you didn't score me, it's because you didn't score me. Wasn't well, cause you couldn't see me. So that's why I'm orange. I will not do an all black car. But I'm gonna put a big wrap on the car. And so it's gonna, I don't know, like that one, I just had like a little half wrap on the crush that was like some turquoise and stuff. And, you know, I don't know what the other colors will be. It might be like a dark blue or something. So it'll have a lot of other colors in it. But uh, anyway, back to the, back to the Okay, get some Uganda juice on here. Da 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 Cutting the wool. Alright. Alright. Where is this? Where is it stud, y'all? Oh, there it is. Still not there yet. Don't want to go past it. Fix and start putting this thing together, y'all. So I had a new member, a new, uh, new sponsor jump in. Two Mac, what was it? God, it was two Mac something, I think. And new sponsor, I'm going to have to look. I really appreciate it. I'll, have, I'll call that out. I got some sponsors that I got some five dollar a month and ten dollar a month sponsors who've been with me for a long time now, about two years supporting us. It makes a hell of a difference. I do. I mean, I know it don't seem like much, but for us, yeah, it's it makes a difference. That's for sure. And I sure appreciate it. And that was just okay. Are we there? Are we there? Are we there? Yeah, we're there. We are there. We're there. Okay. But I was what I was really blown away with was the um, the people helping with the parts and everything. I knew I was really jammed up, and I had two or three thousand dollars in parts that I was six and a half to figure out how to like it. Well, what I was going to do was going to slow the build down because I just wasn't going to be able to do it. Get all the parts. And everybody jumped in and, and helped with them. A few people here, a few people there. Some people like did some big purchases, and uh, I was just, well, I was about to tear over that. I mean, two days later, everything had been 
it had been sponsored, and I didn't even know what this thing. I was like, well, I must be doing something right. It's honestly what I thought. That's about what I thought. When everything got sponsored on me, and I thought, well, that's the sign right there. I think I'm going about this the right way. All right, get this here. Jamie, <laughs> I hope I don't miss you yet. So Jamie even took and put the right slugs that I need on which side. So like on the front, on the front, he sent me a half inch slug. I think it's a hat, so he sent me a half inch slug on that one. Yeah. Now, whether it's supposed to be a half inch up or half inch down, <laughs> I couldn't tell you that, y'all. Uh, we measured the anti to figure that out. And then on the back, he sent me a zero and a half inch on this one. Y'all, I'm way away. I don't know what I'm talking about. But anyway, see those slugs right there, how they go in there? So that one's, so zero is, see, the slug is, the hole is in the middle. The hole is in the middle of the slug. And then that half, if I can get it up here, my gloves are slick. The hole is, is offset a half inch. So anyway, so if I ran half, half, it would be the same. Even if I ran half zero, it would be half inch different, which would be a lot. Oh, so I'm gonna put, need a slug for both of them so see that one's a blank so the bolt could go anywhere through it and then this one's the set one and so see that's a zero right there so they go in like that and Give me 15 seconds.
So I pack out my bolts and take them to the track with me. But as soon as I don't, I'll need them. All right, so I got a couple nuts right here. Bolts, come here, Bessie. Oh, that one, that one. You know, I don't ever use these at the tracks, but I have saved a bunch of racers. You'd be amazed the racers that have been at the track and have a bolt rope put them out. And they'll come up like, hey man, you got a bolt like they'll break it out. This is classic. Like I'll keep a six or eight inch half inch bolt because they'll be like. I broke the bolt out of my left lower rear trailing arm. I'm like, yep, so does everybody else. All the time. Here you go. <laughs> and I'm running the leaf spring and carrying bolts from them guys. But, you know, it's just, I think I've gained from the last couple of years, two or three different guys, that bolt that goes through the frame on the front of the left rear trailing arm. Like, apparently, that is the bolt that you shear. Anyway, where are we at on this? Uh, love the build. Outfit's Garage says, love the build. Hey, I really appreciate these comments. Outfit's Garage, you have gave me some good information at times, and I appreciate that. You were showing us how to make the meatloaf. How about naming the new car meatloaf? Is it going to be meatloaf? What do we got? Because all my cars, they're like my second girlfriends. That's what my wife says they are. So they're all female. I can't help it, y'all. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, I, that's sexist. I'm sorry. I apologize for that. Um, but... Uh, but, you know, they all have got names. They're all my girls. Love them because I put my heart and soul into every one of them. No, it's not meatloaf. It's not. That was Crush. And I'm going to crush it for it's over, too. Uh, what is it? I don't, I don't know. This, keep, this thing keeps telling me it's going to be the beast on the track. Is it the beast? I don't know. I don't know. I ain't. Not there yet. She's going to tell me what she's... She's going to tell me her name. It's going to have to come a little further along before she does. She's going to tell me what her name is. Ah, uh, okay. Focus, Jay. Focus. We're not going to get this done if we don't focus. Yeah, I'm telling y'all. Carl, you're right. We're definitely burning the midnight oil. We are not slacking at all. We are not going to get there. If we work on this car one or two nights a week, it ain't gonna get there. We're not gonna get there in time. Cause my biggest thing that hurt me, um, and it's not a complaint, uh, but it hurt me last year juggling between myself and Rachel. It hurt me, it did. And Rachel wants to race and I want Rachel to race and, and I was proud of her. I could see huge gains during the year. Loved it. Awesome. Glad we could do it. But I told her, I said, girl, this year, your confidence level, you got to get to where you can climb in the car, you can strap yourself in, put your safety equipment on, you can do everything on your own. Because Papa got to run his car. And because, you know, you can't just show up and race once a month and expect to perform well. And, you know, it's like, I tell you, it was hitting my confidence. I ain't lying to y'all. I was running that crush. I was going to the races and, you know, big competition races. And I was getting my tail handed to me. And I'm like, I'm sitting here like, am I this terrible? Am I this bad? And, you know, and I'm like, you know, I'm sitting here like, I drive better than this. I'm not, I'm better than this. I've always been better than this. What's wrong? You know, and I climbed back in the Camaro. I think I need to climb back in the Camaro just to, just to like, I don't know, like a sanity check. You know, just to, and, and, you know, I climbed back in the Camaro and it all just started clicking. And it's like, yep, I still know how to throw, control the throttle. I still know how to, you know, make the car rotate the turn and keep traction going. I still, you know, it's like, I needed to climb back in that Camaro. I did. I want to learn how to drive cool cars, but... You know, it's like, yes, I still have a set of skills that works. Don't let this piece of crap right here convince me that, you know, I can't do it anymore. I can do it. I just need, I need a car to work with me. So, <sighs> anyway, we're going to make this car work with me. Oh, well, you're sitting there, but you is not 
happy, and that is not going to want to stay there. <sighs> I wonder how far off we are right now. Okay, so I have got the upper tower all the way up to the jack bolt right now. It is all the way up to the jack bolt. Got a couple of magnets here. She's not happy. She's not happy. When I say not happy, what do I mean? But it's like wanting to just jerk it all the way shot me out. She's fairly sitting up there. But I'm just trying to kind of, it's like a sandy trick to kind of figure out like where I'm at. That angle looks good right there. I don't know what that angle is. Let me grab my angle finder. Oh, where's my angle finder? There it is. Jamie said it was going to be close. He told me, he said, you know, you might need to trim a little bit. You might need to change slug out. But he said, it's going to be close, Jay. I've been building these cars a long time. It's going to be close. So let's see what that is. Ooh, that's nice. That is, that is 13 degrees right there. That's 13 degrees. 12, 14 degrees is probably, that's right in there. That's probably going to gain. I'm going to bet right now that that thing in in, uh, in bump is going to gain a degree and a half, I bet, an inch. I bet it is. But I'm going to have to figure out how to secure this upper tower in a temporary manner. How are we going to do that? I think I can take and put a... Let me see if i got a, a big pair of vice grips. I can go in there and grip that thing. I mean, I think probably like grab it like a pair of grip. Grip it on there. Oh, look, there's Chris on the berm. Nice, got to get my block to the machine shop ASAP. I'm going to beat you, Chris. I can tell you right now. So Chris was on the berm. I've been calling. I've been shouting him out and everything. You ain't got to call out and thank me anymore on the channel, Chris. You just need to focus on your videos. I'm just trying to like some guys. Um, so I've got a friend of mine. He's got a channel on the berm. Um, they're building a factory stop, and I've been promoting them. I'm going to continue to promote them. Because, like, the people that are watching me build a street stock, um, you know, like, he's building factory stocks, and it's very similar, but, like, he's got, like, a different set of rules he's needing to meet, and, like, he's full firewall and floor pans, and, like, he's got to keep his front, you know, stock upper control arms, and there's different things that are different. And so the cars end up getting built different because of these different types of rules and things and conditions they have to meet. And so, like, if you're looking to see all of the different ways cars are being built because you're trying to figure out as a grassroots racer to build your own car in your backyard and stuff, you need to check out On the Berm. You need to check out Chris and his dad, Pops, um, because they're doing kind of the same thing as me, where if they're going through and they're building the car and, like, like major things he's doing, he's stopping, he's saying, here's why we chose to do this, and here's how we did it, and check this out. And then, you know, like, doing a time... You know, like a time delay, you know, video where it goes through and you'll see him rapid mode, like work through, you know, and like in two minutes, he'll show, you know, the next hour of work where they're welding up the tubes and you can just see how they're working through the process and stuff. It's really good information when you're trying to kind of get your head wrapped around building your own car. And so that's why I've been pushing them. I'm going to keep pushing them because they're over the thousand mark, but there's no reason that like this year, Chris, you could be at like three or four thousand subscribers easy. We just got to get the word out on what you're doing because you're doing good stuff. Um, all right, that was my push for On the Berm in case you didn't notice it. Now, that don't mean leave the live to go check them. You know, you go check them out after the video, okay? Don't don't leave now. All right, what was I? I will ramble. Have y'all figured that out? Uh, 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 screwdriver. Pop this off. I was going to get a big pair of vice grips, too. I tell you, I told you, that jumper was just sitting there like, I'm fixing jump, Jay, I'm fixing jump, I'm coming loose, I'm coming loose. And I know what I'm probably going to do. So like when I built another car, the way I do it, I clamp a piece of steel back there. I was just trying to kind of get an idea. When we actually do the video, I'm probably going to clamp a straight edge because we have to make sure this is parallel before we actually weld it. I'm just trying to figure my numbers out. Oh, uh, so come hither. Maybe these big booger bears right here. I pull you loose for a second. Sit right there. Anyway, I have no idea. I'm just trying to see what the camera's 
that? That's all, I, all I'm trying to figure out right now is where, where is the camber? That's not going to work. In my life, I swear. How's stuff got to be so difficult? like 30 minutes ago, Dustin. But anyway, I'm just showing what, you know, I'm just working to get, like this is prep work to kind of figure out how this front end is going to work before I start shooting all this video. Oh no. Before we start shooting all this video and working through the front end, I got to figure out if I'm even in the ballpark and like, if I got to order some parts or do anything majorly different and do that prep work. So like right now, I'm trying to figure out kind of where I'm at. So I'm going to line that up. Now, like me spotting this like this right here. So, I am literally just throwing it up here. That's 
still ain't got that hip all the way down. That's okay. Let's turn in 20, what is it? It's 20 in, 20 out, right? 20 out, 20 in. Which is it? Is it, so it's 20 out and 20 in, or is it 20 in and 20 out? Who knows? I don't have to, well, fine. Fine, I'll look at the instructions. See, I do this, I always have to look. And I've been doing it over and over and over. And I still have to look. Recast your turn wheels. It's 20 out and then 20 in. That's the way you do it. We are really just going to take a while to guess on this. So, I've got an angle here that'll kind of show me about where 20 is at. It's about right there. So, set it to zero. 20 out. Then we'll turn around. Turn it back. There. Oh, that's too much. Yeah. Just so like 10 degrees. So, like, where I'm at right there is like, that's 10 degrees where it's at. So, I'm just going to take, and I got a mark right here, and I'm going to mark that's 10 degrees caster. Okay. And I'll turn around and pull you out, pull you off. And I'll clean that up later. I ain't worried about that. That gives me a What I'm trying to do. You hush. Turn this off. Get it out of my way. Oh. Yeah, so. I've got a mark. I know I need to be far of that, probably about a half inch far of that. I need to clean that hole up a little bit more, but I need to put this in a vise where I can clean that hole up and it won't chatter or jump on me or something like that. And what else? Let's see. And I got to, when we shoot the video, we got to walk through it. We gotta walk through the video and talk about, I don't know how exactly how I'm gonna explain this, but what we gotta do is get this off here right quick, y'all. So we gotta talk about like where we're at in ride height and where this curve is in the bottom, and like the reason like we're running a half inch extension right here to like lower the right height of the car because we're trying to put this lower control arm right through the middle of what level is, you know, as it works through it and how that as we come up further and further and further, if we're running a stock ball joint, but we run a real low ride height, how that like now that we're way up in this curve, it's actually moving the spindle in toward the car. And that's actually creating this exaggerated bump issue. And I didn't explain that a couple of years ago whenever I was doing, because you know, you can only go so far. But I didn't explain that real well when I was doing the crush. And I think this time around, what I'm gonna do is, is that I'm gonna say, okay, let's set roll center aside. Let's not talk about the roll center. Because when you're looking at the roll center, you're like, how do I put this? You're sitting there putting, moving your angles on your upper and lower control arms and changing your ball joint heights to like put your roll center in a particular point, okay? But you're putting your roll center in a particular point to try to get the camber curve to do a certain thing on the wheels. And in reality, when we run the uh, instant centers across and we run the X across on the roll centers, we get this blended point. Well, it's, it's actually a lie because it's an independent front suspension on the car. You know, you actually have got a set of curves for how this right front's acting and a curves for how this left front is acting. And it creates this fictitious roll center point in the middle that doesn't actually represent the true roll center because if it represented the true roll center, then I could skewer this car with a rod right through where that roll center was and I could sit here and I could rotate this car and these wheels, these wheels 
on this car, as this car rotated, these wheels would like, for example, they would appear to be working together through that one roll center, and they don't because they're on independent front suspension. There's an upper and lower control arm that's completely separate on each side. And so we're sitting here chasing this roll center position to try to make this camber gain and loss do a certain thing on this right front wheel and on this left front wheel. And we're doing all this convoluted math, and we're doing this complicated thing, we're trying to draw it all out, we're using software engineering to do all this. And really, all we want to do is we want to make that tire do what that tire needs to do on the track. So when I shoot this, I'm trying to work out how to explain all you care about is what that tire is doing. So understand the things that control that. Figure out what you want it to do. Make the changes to make that tire do that. And don't freaking have nightmares for the next three months wondering if your roll center is off an inch because it is a fictitious fugazi that really isn't doing anything. How do I explain that in a way that's understood? Y'all tell me. Um, I know how to explain, you know, you know, we can draw it out. That's what I'm going to do. We'll get the whiteboard and like we'll walk through it, you know, like the angles and everything on it. But, you know, basically what I'm trying to explain is, is like, okay, you think about it from this standpoint right here. You know, are you, are you sitting your car down on the right front and like how much are you lifting up your left rear? Like, in other words, is your car compressing, you know, or is your car, you know, rolling over? And, and what are you wanting to do? So like if you're, if you're trying to just squat your car down on your right front and not pick your left front way up and not pick your left rear way up, but just squat down into it and then like traction up the left rear only two or three inches, you don't need two or three degrees of camber gain per inch of compression because you're gonna you're gonna literally turn that right front end all of this angle but you have not rotated the car over to match that because the idea is is that you pick the you pick that right angle that correct angle for that right front tire and then as your car is rolling over and the body is changing you're not like washing that out and losing it you know the so basically what that looks like is, is that as that car compresses down into that right front, what's well, kind of rolling over on it. Once well, it's rolling over on it, you know, you, you've got to have this camber curve that curves the tire back in. That way, as the car rolls over, it doesn't make the tire lean out. All right. So what you really care about is like, well, how much is my car rolling this way versus just doing this and sitting down? Well, that's telling you how much camber curve you want. And you're moving your roll center around to like try to like get that to be right. And how does that work? So if I move the roll center way over to the right side, it's like I've skewered the car through the right front headlight. So as the car turns on the roll center, it's like I get this maximum rotation right on the tire. So I need a lot of camber change as I compress because of that, because the, the car is turning over right on top of that tire, so the tire has to really lean over at the same time to do it. So I need like two degrees of camber gain per inch of compression, two and a half, maybe three. But if my roll center is back over here to the left side, on the far left side, the car is like, you know, it's taking, it's picking up on this left front and the right front is just squatting down. It's like it's like the car is just, in other words, the car is like the left front's planted and the right front is just doing this. It's up and it's down. It's up and it's down. You're not really picking the left rear up. You're not getting that big articulation. Okay, well, you don't need but about one degree of camber gain is all you need. You see what I'm saying? It's So, and the roll center is just a, a way of mathematically understanding that but it's kind of irrelevant. It's like, what are you doing with your car? Okay, we'll set you a camber game to match that. So that's where I'm at now. Um, it's very different from where I was a couple years ago. I mean, I've always known this. I've always known this, but I felt like, you know, you have to know your roll center. You have to know exactly where it is, you know. You're not a real racer. Well, no, you, you, you know, you can do it. So you don't need to, you don't have to know all that math to make it work. Um, so, yeah, I know, I'm boring, y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, so I'm just working through it. Oh!
Yeah, I'm good. I'm gonna start shooting this tomorrow night. I'm gonna put my bar back here, set my upper here. Let me see. What did I miss, guys? What did I miss? All right, let's talk for a second. I didn't come up with that rear clip design. Bane says, Jason, where did you come up with that rear clip design? Let me tell you where I come up with every design on every car. I just look at what I'm trying to, my objectives that I'm trying to achieve, and then I just engineer it out. I'm not looking at anybody's car. I don't want to be, I don't want to go the same speed as somebody else on the track. Um, I don't want to chase them by copying their design. Because I'll never be faster than them copying their design. Because I don't have the skill set better than them, I can tell you that. Um, so, you know, I'm just looking at my objectives and I'm saying, what am I trying to accomplish? And then I just engineer it out. You know, so like on the rear design I was looking at, um, I really didn't want to put that fuel cell behind the rear end. Didn't want to. Um, I just, I think it's safer in front of it. But I need maximum performance. I'm not going to keep up at that top level if I don't absolutely tap out maximum performance. I could not sit my cage as far forward as I was going to have to and put the fuel cell in front of it and make it work. It just wasn't going to be competitive. And uh, so anyway, so I put it behind it. So then I said, how can I put the fuel cell behind the rear end and actually be comfortable with the level of safety? And so what I said was, is my big issue that I have with fuel cells behind the rear end is that everybody is wanting to build this cage, right? And that case is this, this one cage that they put around the rear end. And like when you go into the turn, and this, this is the thing, you run into the turn, okay, track's hooked up, all right? You're rolling. You're entering the turn 70 mile an hour plus, all right? So you're on a big three eights or bigger, and you are hauling the mail. And you take a bump in the left rear at rotation that is the worst time to take a bump to the left rear. It kicks you loose, you hit the marbles, and you slam into the wall right on your right rear of your car, and you slam into the wall hard, and you rack your rear end. Well, if you build your fuel cell on rails tied down into that rear end, when you rack your rear end, you rack your fuel cell. Well, when you rack your fuel cell, Liquid's uncompressible. It's going somewhere. Don't think for a second that it will not blow all of those quarter inch, three sixteenths inch bolts that hold that cap, you know, for your fuel cell and that, you know, that twist on cap and everything. It will blow all of that loose from that poly. I mean, you can instantly just literally gush five gallons of fuel right off the top of your fuel cell. I just think that's an issue, y'all. I do. And I mean, it happens. It's dangerous nine out of 10 times. There's never a spark there, um, you know, and they're just throwing oil dry on it and everybody's cool and you put a new rear clip on your car and put a new fuel cell in, but I got an issue with it. And so I looked at it from a standpoint of, if I want, uh, I want a substructure and I want a superstructure. And I think my design itself will evolve over time. Like I'm looking at it and I'm like, you know, could I make it prettier? Yes, but I was strictly looking at it from an engineering standpoint. How do I use the minimum amount of tubes to create the maximum amount of safety? And so that's where I, so that's how I ended up with that design. I was just looking at it like, you know, how do I do this fuel cell itself to, you know, put it as close as I can to have it as tight and have it as compact and have the safety around it and then turn around and have that outside structure that's quickly replaceable and that is going to absorb energy before it ever comes in contact with the fuel cell. And then potentially what I want it to do is like I want like that that whole rear clip to like push down and you know, I didn't go into all that on the video but like the angles on the fuel cell and stuff what's going to happen is is even when it contacts it it's going to drive it under it so it's going to like literally the two are going to walk past each other and so it's still not going to necessarily collapse on the fuel cell so that's where that came from was was just going through that process of what we were trying to achieve uh that bracket looks like it's going to work out as far as height to the dashboard. Are you going to trim it down any? And oh, so Chris is saying the bracket. Okay, yeah. So the one Jamie cut for me, um, the um, the upper the upper mount brackets, they are going to get cut. So what I'm going to do is is that uh, in this next episode, I'm going to work out the alignment, and we're just we're going to try to focus on just like where are we going to put them and what's the roll center positions and camber curves that we're creating for that and we're just going to do that um, and then turn around and I'm going to have to do the bay bars next they are going to get trimmed 
uh, just from a standpoint of I'm going to do a bay bar. I haven't made up my mind yet. There's two different ways that we can do this. So like, uh, let me grab the, uh, grab the other one right quick. Be quicker. I don't have it all bolted up. But, so when this is up here, sit up there, baby. So when this is up there, it's like all the way up. I think it, it's too high. And he, he leaves, intentionally leaves these long. That's, he does that on purpose. But it is, it's right up there. And when I say right up there, yes, yeah, so that's sitting at 30, 30, let's see, uh, 31 and a quarter. And that tube right there is 35 and a half, right? I got more drop than that that's going to happen. But I'm going to have a tube. I'm gonna have a tube right here, okay? My mid plate right here. I'm gonna have a tube right here. And that tube right there, we're gonna figure out, like, you know, as far as like deck height and stuff and all of that. We want this to be under it. But we're gonna have this tube, and I think, so there's a couple ways I can do this. I can either come off this and then have a bend and then run across this and then down 45, or I can use this like a node. So I have a straight tube that comes to right here. I got a node where I cap this off right here, and then I'll turn around and take a piece of tube and I'll bend and put, it may be like a 60 degree. Wherever this front, this front's gonna get cut off way back about right here. This will get capped off and a set of plates put on there for the front bumper. Um, but wherever this gets cut off, I'm gonna come down right in front of that. So that, it might be a 45. But anyway, but like if I come back to this and then butt into that node, that may be better because I know I'm gonna have a V coming out of the center right here. And if I do like one tube and like I bend it here and then bend it there, and, and the bends are gonna to be tough to figure out because it's the bends on two different planes. Chris, you'll know exactly how tough that is, because uh, you do them. But, uh, but anyway, but if you do two different bins on two different planes, that's tough. Now, I know how to do it. I know how to do it. You, you use this tube to cheat to do it. But anyway, but it would be easier if this came into a node, and then I could turn around and take a straight tube off the center, because I want to have the W. All right, so this W right here is what's going to help to give this support, you know, for these towers, because... You know, I am going to have a shock right here, okay? And so I don't want just this one tube going all the way down through here and then this, you know, like this, you know, these zero point shocks and stuff, I mean, they, you know, it's like they get a ton of pressure on them. And so I don't want to twist on this tube and it like literally is flexing this entire structure in and out. Well, that W coming in from that corner right there will help to stop that, uh, but if I do the bend, then that W is like coming in on the back side of that arch, and that's going to be funky. Um, so I do think that it ends up being like a, a three-way joint of the tubes there. Now, I'm not going to do a note here. I'm just going to do a bend over, but I, I think I'm going to come down some and then turn around and where that comes down to, then I'm going to run that absolutely horizontal and... Coming back around, I'm a long way around telling anything. I apologize for that. But in that episode, where this tube's at right here, it depends on where the shot needs to be. Because, so you see, you know, that's, 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 I've been mocking this stuff up. So I got the shock on here. Oh, which one of our sponsors sponsor these shocks? Uh, let's see. Gary bought the... Oh, I apologize for this. I've, everybody's been helping me on these parts. I'm sorry for this. But um, anyway, I don't, I don't know if this was Jared. This may have been Jared. Um, but anyway, um, I've got my mounts here for my shocks, all right? And so they, that's on an inch and a half tube right there. And the reason I went ahead and mocked this up is because I'm going to set this inch and a half where I think it's going to be, uh, I mean, a half inch up from right height. I'm going to put this joker in here. I'm going to set it to where I need it to be, probably where that it can extend two inches, you know, maximum, and, you know, compression. It won't be a problem. I'm not going to travel seven inches. 
But I'm going to get it. Oh, that's a step up in there. Oh, that's a lift front. That's why. So I'm going to get this thing down. And like, I mean, look, look. You see? So there's a lot that has to be cut off. So like wherever that needs to be, wherever that needs to be, that dictates where that shock right there dictates where this tube gets cut off, what that comes down to, how that comes across and turns down. Like literally the shock's controlling every bit of that. And it will be a compromise because like what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to say, okay, what's optimal for the right front, what's optimal for the left, and then I'm going to see, can I run the two at exactly the same height and make it parallel across? You know, and maybe this one's a little higher and that one's a little lower than it you know, has to be or vice versa or something like that. Man, that's what, I was saying something in that, that video from last night. Y'all, that's the first time, last night's the first time I've ever shot something through. Went to the house, edited, and before I went to bed that night, got it loaded up and all. Um, but yeah, so the shock itself is actually going to control where that tube has to be. It's an order of events of how you have to build these things. You have to go in order for sure. Um, and let's see, I've been watching Jay's stuff, good info. Yeah, Mr. Jay Neal's got some good stuff, Dustin. Um, he's trying to put some stuff out there to help race. Whether you do business with him or not, I mean, you know, he'll talk to you whether you buy shops from him or not. I mean, you know, he's, you know, he's time's precious. Don't get me wrong, but he tries to help anybody. We believe you. You ain't got to join anything, Ari. I like this idea a lot. Stephen Shaw said, "Hello, Jason. I like this idea a lot." Well, I don't know exactly which part of it because I've been rambling for an hour, so there's that. But. Anyway, okay, what else? I'm fixing to turn this off. If there is anything, any questions, anybody, any complaints, put them on here now or forever hold your peace. Um, shocks. You run shocks. We just run rubber pans on the corners. You know what? Sometimes I think it would be better. I have ripped a shock off before, Chris, and the car got better. I have went on a Camaro. Um, we were running. We were... So I was running at Malden, Missouri. Track doesn't even exist now. We were running at Malden, Missouri. We had always sucked at Malden. We was on asphalt pull-offs, but 10-inch wide tires. And uh, anyway, and factory stock, of course. And this is back in the late 90s. But uh, we were running, and I just sucked. I did, and I was going nowhere, and the track got rough. And we were in, like, 18th or 19th place. And about halfway through that race, that car got good. And we came from 18th, we started 18th, and we were back there dead last. We come to 5th in about 5 laps. I mean, I just, like, it's just all of a sudden, I was like, oh, wow, and just never lifted. And we were washing the car. Of course, it was like right before the next race. It was not literally... You know, the, it was not the next day. It was, you know, me in my 20s and, like, I washed the car on Saturday morning, going to go race Saturday night. And the whole right rear shock and everything was missing off the car. <laughs> you know, so that had me scrambling, um, welding stuff on and everything. But, yeah, it ripped the right rear shock off the car and, like, went straight to the front. So that taught me something then years ago. Don't wait until Saturday morning to wash your car. But, uh, anyway, all right, so what else we got here? Uh... Uh, I appreciate your willingness to show details of what you're doing. Been subscribed for a couple of years now. You definitely helped the asphalt racer make a switch to dirt and understand. Well, I appreciate that. Popper Motorsports. And I don't think I've seen you on here before, Popper. I appreciate that, bud. Appreciate you watching me. Bane said, I dig it. I hope it works out for you. I do. I do. I hope it. Um, yeah. Chris said that uh, he believes he's seen a mod break off a left rear and get faster. Yeah, I've heard of guys snatching the left rear loose and the same thing happening. It freed the car up. That it had the car was the car was bound up and it was like it you know it it got better because the shock was actually holding it back. It's that's happened. Um, I raced with a boy last year that had you know left front shock. He blew out his left front shock and it was all it had hung up his left front and uh, you know and so anyway. And, he was like, you know, oh, I got to load the car up. This factory stock. He's got to load the car up. And I'm like, no, just take it off. Oh, yeah, I can't do it. Like, just take it off. Come on. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. It was fine. He got out there and run. I think he ran fourth or fifth or something. I'm like, quit. He's a good driver. Um, he was. He's a real good driver. So it's young, young guy that's been racing a couple of years. He's a good driver. I'm like, oh, just take it off. It'll be fine. So he learned, too, from that. Uh, all right, I'm going to wrap up right here. I was just showing y'all what was going on. You know, we're making meatloaf tonight. That is not the name of the car. That is not the name of the car. we got to come up with it. 
Uh, Dirt Racer 87. Yep, Popper. I've seen that. I've seen that. You've been with me. Oh, what else? Brian Swigger's back on. Can you help me with a Ford Watcher with a 9-inch floater? Uh, Brian, you know, I, unless I get in and make a road trip up there, Bubba, <laughs> that's all I can tell you. So Brian Swigger is uh, on his Facebook. Y'all want to see something, you know, everybody struggles. So go on Facebook and find Brian Swigger's Facebook page because he's building a Ford Street Stock. And he's got a Watts link. And he got a 62-inch rear end, but the car stocks a 64 and in Watts Link has got a whole bunch of engineering going on right out on the hubs that's just a nightmare to navigate how to make that work um, and set it up, you know, with like a floater nine inch, you know, racing on a 62 inch. That last inch is tough to deal with. Um, so, yeah, check his, check his page out. Swear it's uh, S-W-I-G-E-R. Y'all wear him out. He's a good dude. See what he's got going on. Champions, uh, champion assets. Says, do you believe the metric chassis will be better than the 73, 77 chassis? I thought they may have better geometry. I am, um, I am really surprised. I think I was overconfident on the 73, 77. Um, the 73, 77 chassis has a really good front end. I started out on it. I know them and everything. It has a really good front end on it. And, you know, the I did not understand the forward traction and the rolling up and the tying down on the front of the car and staying in this traction turning mode and just how critical that was. This this 7377 chassis, in my opinion, if I was to put stock towers back on the front of it and get the front end where that could be factory stock legal. But if I were on a floor paint in it, I think this thing would absolutely crush factory stock competition. I, it'd eat them alive. It would. It'd eat them alive. I think like in that ultimate street stock series where that, you know, you're pretty much on a tube chassis at this point. And money-wise, you're racing with guys that like ran supers and open wheel modifieds outlaws and that have the budgets to just absolutely crush you with money in a street stock. At that level, I can't make that car do it um, because, like, for example, the the 22 and 3 eighths inch or no, 22 and 5 eighths inch lower trailing arm that's on a 73, 77 frame compared to the 19 and 3 eighths on a metric. Guys, like, when you start talking about, like, the angle that that left rear lower trailing arm stays in, so the metric car can run less bite on his car because he'll make up for it in bar angle and it adds 20, 30, 40 pounds. And, and so like on mine, my window for setup and stuff was narrower. And I didn't understand that. I didn't understand that. So like when, when, when a metric car rolls up two inches on the left rear, he has a bigger swing in the amount of traction change that's happening. The car can navigate track better on in the slick than what the 7377 can. And um, yeah, champion assets, I can't cut it down. That's illegal. I wish I, I would. I would. I'd put 1938 lowers on it and I would just change up the rear end for that to all work out on the pinion angle and the car would immediately get faster. Um, but uh, but anyway, but like with the longer lower, I think that was hurting me. Um, I think that, you know, the. You know, with them being able to run these completely tubular lower control arms, like these lower control arms that I've got that I got from Rodney Wing that owns Why Not Motorsports, man, them things ain't nothing about them jokers. No kind of stock, nowhere on nothing. They are nice, and I mean they are well engineered, um, and they're better than the Camaro lowers, no doubt. Put the spring in a great spot. Give you plenty of room. Do the shock any way you want. Just nice. And, you know, so, like, the way it works out, the 180-inch, I think the 112 versus the 108, yes, on these short tracks, on the slick, especially when you're slowed way down and you're right down on the bottom of bull ring and you need to keep the car up and just turn and turn and turn the whole way where you're just rounding the track out, that 108 can do that better. It can I just, I underestimated the difference. I did. Um, and I think I learned a lot from the 112. And I think that we take what we learned. 
we apply it to this 108, and we go crush them. You know, we build, we we learn from that car so that we can build the car it's going to take to absolutely beat the pants off of them. Um, that's where I'm at. You know, if, if you don't have confidence, you don't need to go to racetrack. You know, you need to you need to have confidence that you're going to build what you need to win. Um, so, oh, let's see what else. Yeah, I know I'm rambling. I said I was going to hang up, but anyway. Uh, Dustin says, uh, that's why I had Chris build me a metric a little better on average track. <laughs> yep. Uh, Bain said, can you run? Uh, Bain said, can you run the adjustable shock mounts from Weir's? Uh, yes, you can run adjustable shock mounts. If so, I'd be using as much bolt-on mounts as possible. It makes dang good. Everything, everything that Chad Weir's makes. I called him Cody one night. I got a Cody, um, that I've been, I've been working with and everything. I was calling him Cody, but I think it's actually Chad. Everything they make is nice. Everything they make, money, <laughs> for sure, <laughs> for sure. I got the drop cup, and I thought that drop cup was going on the right front, you know, and I something I learned. Y'all, I'll just keep talking until y'all bail. I'll just keep talking until y'all bail on me. But anyway, so I was going to put this on the right front, but then I got some more information and everything. This is going on the right rear. So we're going with the internal cup like this without the bearing on the right rear. We're not running a bearing on the right rear. We're going to put the OD cup that's a drop just like this on the right front. So we're putting a drop on the right front and the right rear both. We're going to put this one on the right rear. We're going to put the one that's an outside cup that we can put the bearing up inside that won't just constantly get be eating dirt um, on the right front. Um, and so I don't know. Uh, Mr. J. Neal makes them, so I'm, I'll buy it from Mr. J. Neal. Um, he's my guy. And, I mean, quality-wise, it's, you know, Chad makes the same quality. They're both making great products. Um, are you going to clearance the frame for the steering arms under the motor? For the steering arms under the motor, am I going to clearance the frame for the steering arms under the motor? Uh, uh, the front horn piece um, is gone. Um, other than that, I shouldn't have to make, oh, I know what you're talking about. You're talking about like the frame rail itself. Um, I shouldn't have to. If I do, I'll like cut an inch and a half tube in half and make like a little tunnel channel. I don't know. We'll do it together on a video um, if we do. I don't think on a metric we're going to have to. We'll find out. Um, that Michael Merrill, it didn't like that dirty dry track chain. Great infos. All right. So we are one minute, 13, uh, one hour and 13 minutes just went through. Um, and like I said, was just kind of checking out to see how this was going to work out. Cause I'm going to try to get this shot over the next couple of nights. That way we can get this video on Sunday on, um, on going through a mountain that tower on it. We're not going to do the right and left front. We're going to do one side, and then I've got to just move, 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 and get the other side done because, you know, by next week, I need all the bay bars and everything done on the front, and we've got to go to the middle of the car. We're going to work and go through the middle, and then we'll turn around and come back and do, like, radiator and, you know, all the little stuff and everything. Um, we want to have the car down on the ground on wheels and tires about three weeks from now is where I really need to be. You know, so like that second, third week of February, I need this car sitting on the concrete. Um, and somewhere in the middle of that, we got to put the body on the Camaro. Um, so Mr. Bentley with Dominator, um, he's going to help us. And we're going to put a completely new Dominator body on the Camaro for Rachel. I got to work that in somewhere, y'all. I can't, I can't ignore Rachel. We got to have her ready to go. We're going to try to get her into a race by March too. i I'm out of here. I'm out of here. It's all good. Thank y'all.